right there together. Rainbow and then goodness. Hey, Lord, we thank you for your goodness. Father, we thank you for your provision. Lord, um, I, Father, I lift up the offer to you, Lord. It's, uh, it's your house, this place where we gather together, Lord. And as long as, Father, you're meeting the bills, we're going to continue to gather here. We thank you for your goodness and your provision. Father, uh, bless those that can give, Father, and those that can't, Father, to enable them that they can give. Father, whether they give of uh, their finances or of their time, Lord, we've all been called to give unto you the gift that's been given unto us, Lord, so we can help one another. So, Lord, the gift that you've given to me, Lord, I'm going to share with the people today. Lord, the, the gift of teaching and, and uh, Father, the insight of your word. And, Lord, I pray, Lord, that it will... Uh, just minister to him today, Father. How awesome you really are, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. You guys ready? I want to, uh, I'm going to give you three scriptures we're going to go through today. It's in Luke, Matthew, and Mark. And it's about when Christ is walking through the field on a Sabbath. Um, I'm going to open it up and show it to you. So if you have your Bible, I want you to go there. Um, you should have your word. I want you to go there. I want you to go to first Luke chapter five, and we're going to start. Um, we're going to start in verse thirty-three. Now, I got a lot to cover, so I'm going to try to go fast because I want to give it to you. Okay, so um, it's important to know what's being said prior to what's happening. So we're going to focus in around the Sabbath. Why are your disciples, you know, gathering and eating on a Sabbath and you're not supposed to be working on a Sabbath, right? So, um, you know, they're breaking the law. The Pharisees told Jesus. Well, you're going to see, we're going to read it in uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. We're going to see what each of them say. They say all about the same thing. But you're going to see the whole fundamental that's around it before they get to this point. Alright, you ready? So watch this. So we're going to start right before it, uh, chapter 6, which is where Jesus works on the Sabbath. We're going to start. Um, we're going to start in verse 36. Alright? So he says, the parable of the cloth and the wine bottles. Everybody know, knows that this is about the new covenant. Or oh, I could start right above it. I'm going to start right above it. Watch this in verse 33. So we're in 533. Jesus teaches about fasting. And he says, And they said unto him, Why do the disciples of John uh, fast often and make prayers? Likewise, the disciples of the Pharisees, but, uh, thine, but yours eat and drink. Now let me throw out one thing really quick to you. John was the Elijah to come, right? So remember, when the Lord returns, Elijah must come before the Lord returns. Right? Y'all with me there? Now watch this. So here is the first clue of what's taking place. And, and then Jesus said, watch this response. And he said unto them, can you make the children of the bride chamber fast? Wow. Right? While the bridegroom is with them. So this is a picture. Here it is. Elijah's there. And the bridegroom and the bride chamber. So this is a picture of the end. Right? Y'all understand that? Say yes if you understand what I'm telling you. So there's a big allusion to what's going is more than what you see. So before he gets into the Sabbath, there's something that's happening right before it that's all half, it's all together. Understand that? Watch. And he says, then he says this. And he, uh, he spoke a parable to them. Verse 36. And he spake a parable unto them. No man putteth a piece of new garment upon an old. Otherwise, then both the new uh, maketh the rent. And the piece that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with the old. This is, you can't, you poor old, you know. This is old covenant, new covenant. This is what he's talking about here. Right? Remember, you got John above it talking about a marriage. That's the blood of the new covenant. Jesus making a marriage. Remember all of this? So this is, he's talking about a new covenant here. And he says in verse 37, No, no man putteth new wine into old bottles, uh, else the new wine will burst the bottles, and they be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. But new wine must be put into new bottles, or new wine skins, and both are preserved, no man also having drunk of the old wine, 
uh, desireth new, for he saith the old is better. The old covenant is not better than the new covenant. This is all about a covenant, co co a covenant making, a covenant of marriage. Remember, it started off with marriage. This is Jesus literally and physically telling him there's a covenant that's about to be cut that he's going to make. Right? So watch what happens. Next verse. Now we're going to go into... Uh, this, this, uh, the Sabbath. Watch this. And it came to pass on the second Sabbath after the first. Does anybody know what that is? The second Sabbath after the first. That's the 14th day of Nisan. <laughs> the second Sabbath. Seven, right? The second Sabbath is the second seven. That's 14. It's the second Sabbath because it's the first month. Remember, he's talking about a new covenant right above it. When does he make a new covenant? On the 14th day of Nisan when he dies. Wow. You see it. So it's straight out. And it came to pass on the second Sabbath, which is the 14th day of Nisan, after the first Sabbath, right? That would be the seventh. That he went through the cornfields. That's the grain fields. Watch this. He went through the grain fields and his disciples plucked the ears of the grain and did eat, rubbing them in their hands. Now, this is that you know it's Nisan 14. It's the second Sabbath of the month because they're gathering in the grain. Wow, the harvest. The harvest is in the springtime. Jesus died. Right? The new covenant. And he went down and gathered those that was in the, in the heart of the earth. Right? So here it is. God has given us an insight on when he's coming again. You with me? The bride, John. Then the bridegroom and the bride chamber. You know, the bride chamber. Can they fast while he's here? He's alluding to when the bridegroom goes... That means he's about to die. That's giving you another clue as to what the date is. It's the 14th day. It's the Passover. But this is not the Passover of when he's going to die in a couple of years later. Right? But right now, he's alluding to what's coming. So there's a lot that's focused around what he's saying. And man, this gets crazy amazing. So let's go and read now. And it came to pass on the second Sabbath, which is the 14th day of Nisan, that they went through the grain fields and the disciples plucked the ears of the corn and they eat, did eat, rubbing them their hands together. When you rub it together, you know what you're making? A tribune. You're grinding it. You're rubbing it together. That's where you get the word tribulation. You're rubbing it together so that it can be harvested. All right? And certain of the Pharisees said unto them, Why do ye that which is not lawful to do on the Sabbath days? Right? And Jesus answered them, saying, Have you not read so much as this, what David did when he himself was hungered and they which were with him? Now listen. This is all about the seventh day Sabbath rest. This is what this is about. This is the question that's being posed to Jesus. So here the, the question for you and me today is, is it mandatory for a Christian to keep the Sabbath? The seventh day Sabbath. Is it mandatory? No. Jesus is addressing this. This is what he's being questioned with. Is it right to work on the seventh day Sabbath and gather in? We know that when the Lord returns after 6,000 years, on the beginning of the 7,000th year is the gathering. And that, that thousand years is called the millennial rest. So, is the seventh day Sabbath, is it Jesus Christ? Or is it a, a day totally separate from who he is? Or is he physically and literally the seventh day Sabbath rest where we find our rest not just one day a week, but every single day of the week. And when you keep him, you keep Sabbath. Yeah. This is what's being addressed. This is what he's talking about. And 
the connection that he makes is absolutely amazing because around this seventh day Sabbath there's a lot going on he's saying number one it's when Elijah is going to come and I'm going to gather my, my elect unto me number two it's when the bridegroom comes for the uh, for the bride <laughs> so he's giving you the time the springtime again so all of this is being set forth before the, the question of the Sabbath is being posed. And it says in verse 3, And Jesus answered them and said, Have you not read so much as what David did when he himself was hungered and they that were with him? Listen to me. Very important because Jesus, what was happening right there, Jesus just made a direct connection to David, the king, and what he did. So if you don't know what David did and what he's making a connection to, you're not going to fully understand what this is he's talking about. By him making this connection to David, we're going to go back and see what was going on with David so we can get a proper view of who he is, what the Sabbath is, what's going on, what it points to, so you have a clear understanding of what's being said. Right? Not just, you know, and if you don't go back into the Old Covenant, right? Because right before it, he is making the contrast between Old Covenant and New Covenant. Wine bottles. You don't take a new piece of cloth and put it on an old garment. Why? That new piece of cloth will stand out. You'll walk around and it won't look right. You can't do that. You can't put old wine... You can't put new wine into old wineskins. Why? When the fermentation begins to expand, that wineskin, a skin is this skin, you and me, a wine bottle, can't hold it. That's why he said, those that have drinking of the old covenant don't want to have the new covenant because they say, oh, the old covenant is better. No, it's not. So now Jesus is addressing not only the Sabbath, he's addressing when he's coming, who he's coming for, the, the blood, and he's uh, addressing the new and old covenant. There's a lot. Then now he's addressing what David did. All right there. But it's important to read before and after. Watch this. Verse 3, and, or 5, 3. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Have you not read so much as what David did? That name is the well-beloved. Well he himself, when he was hungry, and they which were with him. So there was others with David at this time on the 14th day. Jesus died, went in the ground. There was others with him, right? And what did he do when he went down? He fed them. He preached. So he said, and what was he? He was the bread. I mean, anyway. And he went into the, watch this, how he went into the house of God, and he did take and ate the showbread. Wow. David ate the showbread. We know the showbread's Christ. He's making a direct connection to David eating the showbread in the temple. And he gave also to them that were with him. That's why we get to eat the bread. Jesus gave unto us, right? Which it is not lawful to eat, but for the priest alone. We're kings and priests under Christ, right? As long as you are with David, you could eat the showbread. Because David was a picture of Christ. When did David go into the temple? Ah, oh, wow. When did he go eat the showbread? You're going to see when he went. Crazy amazing. Because Jesus is doing the exact same thing. Watch this. He says, and he said unto them, The Son of Man is Lord, that means Yahweh, He is God, also of the Sabbath. And then the next thing it says, right under that, is Jesus, watch this, and I'm just going to paraphrase this one, is the man, with the, after he leaves the field, on that very day he goes into the synagogue. Right? He goes in that synagogue. He says, hey, is it, is it right? Is it, is it good? Is it okay to do good on a Sabbath? Or not to do good? Is it okay? And he sees a man with a withered hand. His right hand, it says. So this is also a day of healing. Wow. The right hand. Watch this. They were gathering the corn with their hands. 
and they was being condemned for what they were doing with their hands. You work with your hands. You can't do that. You can't work on the Sabbath. Now he goes in the synagogue and he's pointing out a man who's got a withered hand. Right? So he's making a connection. Your hand represents what you do. They were just gathering corn. So now he goes in the, the synagogue and he says, hey, the man with the withered hand, is it right, stand up, is it right to do good or not to do good? But just so you know that I am, you know, Lord of the Sabbath, Yahweh of the Sabbath, watch this on this day, the 14th, the 14th, the second Sabbath, the man is healed. It's a day of healing. Wow. Same day the children of Israel left Egypt on the 14th day and there was not one sick sick or feeble among them when they left. Why? They just ate the Passover meal on the 14th day. They were all healed. Wow. So now, I want you to turn your Bibles and um, go, to, um, go to Matthew chapter 11. I got to run through this really quick because I want to get to where I want to go. Matthew chapter 11. Um, and I'm going to start right before it. Chapter 12 is controversy over the Sabbath. But chapter 11, verse 25, starts off this. He says, uh, 1125, At that time, Jesus said, um, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent and hast revealed them unto the babes. Right? Even, O Father, for uh, so it seemed good in thy sight. What did he hide from them? The new covenant. That was the mystery of the gospel. The new covenant was coming. They didn't understand it. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal to him. And then he says this, crazy amazing. Makes another connection to it. So, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Now, he's given a direct connection to the seventh day Sabbath. <laughs> seventh day. Right? And he says, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Watch this. And learn of me. Take, take your yoke. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. And he says, uh, for I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest for your souls. Wow. So be right before the verse comes, chapter 12, right before we get into the Sabbath rest, this is all planned. He's teaching on it and then goes walk into the field. So the Pharisees would follow him. He just tells them, come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. I'll give you Sabbath from your work. It's on the Sabbath day. Then he leaves, goes in the field. You know the Pharisees are watching him and then he, bam, they start pulling the weed. So this is beyond the shadow of a doubt. Jesus is making a direct connection to the seventh day Sabbath, the fourth commandment in Exodus 20. Beyond the shadow of a doubt. Because one of the biggest things is about keeping Sabbath. People are like, do I have to do it? Well, as long as you're with Jesus, you're okay. And look what he says. Um, he said, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Right? A yoke is what they put on the cows that plowed the field. Right? This is about work. But remember, that Sabbath rest that God was actually talking about is what's talked about in Hebrews chapter 4 that we're to strive to enter into that rest and that rest is Jesus Christ. So this is all bringing us back to the law. And he says, uh, chapter 12, at that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the, through the corn. That's the grain. He's doing it on purpose, right? And his disciples were hungry, and they uh, began to pluck the ears of the corn. And that's not corn. That's the ears of the grain to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. Watch the connection he makes now. He's amazing. Remember, he says, uh, But he said unto them, How ye, have ye not read what David did when he was hungry, and they that with him? How they entered into the house of God and did eat the showbread. 
they went into the temple. Okay? Now, this is very important. And he says, which was not lawful for him to eat. Right? Neither for them that was, that was with him, but only for the priest. And then he says another connection. He says, Or have you not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priest in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? Why? Because the priest have to serve the people. Right. They have to work to serve the people. But they're blameless. And he says, watch this. But I say unto you, that in this place is one greater than the temple. Because he was the temple. So he now just made himself greater than the temple. Right? But if you had known uh, what this meaneth, that I will have mercy and not sacrifice. You would have not condemned the guiltless. Wow. Why? They're condemning those that are with Jesus. Yeah. That a gath is Jesus gathering corn? No. He ain't doing it. You know why? Because he's got to keep the law. <laughs> but his disciples are doing it. But they're blameless because they're with Him. Right. Or in Him. Oh. Watch. It gets, get, man, it's going to get crazy amazing. He says, um, and, uh, But uh, if you have not known uh, what this meaneth, uh, but if you have known what this meaneth, that God desires mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is God, even of the Sabbath day. And then he goes right back into again about the healing of the withered hand, right? So now, go to, um, let's go to Mark 2. This is, this is the importance of, you know, because we just got a little bit more information right there. He just, now he said, remember he said, do you not know what David did and were guiltless? On the, in, in, uh, in Luke. But then he added in Matthew, do you not know what David did and what the priests do on the Sabbath and are blameless? Bam! That's added. Right? So now we got to find out what David did and we know he added something with the priests. Now in Mark chapter 2. So Mark says, um, Mark chapter 2, verse um, 23. This is, this is good stuff. He says, um, um, and we start before, and if you see like in uh, verse two, ver uh, chapter 2, verse 18, there's the parable of the cloth and the wine bottles again. We know that's talking about the Old Covenant, New Covenant. We know this is the 14th day of Nisan. It's the second Sabbath. It's the day that Jesus died and gave us a new covenant, the blood covenant, right? This is not, this is the very day, but he won't die another two years from this time on this day. So you see, on these days, he's following the feast and teaching something about it. And he says, um, um, let's see, uh, in verse 23. Controversy over the Sabbath. Mark says, And it came to pass that when he went through the cornfields, the grain fields, on the Sabbath day, we know it's the second Sabbath. Remember it said it in Luke. And his disciples began as they went to pluck the ears of the corn. That's the grain. And the Pharisees said unto him, Behold, why do you do on the Sabbath that which is uh, unlaw not lawful? And he said unto them, Have you not read what David did when he had need and was hungry? He and they that were with him. Watch. Now we're getting something else. A little bit more information. How he went into the house of God in the days of Abathar, the high priest. <laughs> oh my Lord. Wow. Passover is when, when Passover is when the high priest brings the, the blood, you know, into the holy, the most holy. So now, Jesus is making another direct connection as to what the day is. 
And now he tells you, don't you know what David did when, uh, and how he went into the house of God in the days of Abathar. Now, Abathar means father of preeminence. That's crazy. His name means father of preeminence. So now, what does preeminence mean? Let me tell you. Preeminence means, so by him saying that even he's God of the Sabbath, he's Lord of the Sabbath, Yahweh of the Sabbath, now he makes a direct connection to David to the very same place and now tells you who's the high priest at that time. Right? And he says, Abathar. And Abathar's name just so happens to mean father of preeminence. Preeminence means the fact of surpassing all others in superiority and supremacy and greatness and excellence and distinction. He's saying, <laughs> I mean, come on. This is crazy. Right? He's letting us know, I'm over it. I'm greater than it. I surpass it. Right? And it means important, prestige, statue. It means renown. I'm the celebrity. I'm the Passover. I make a new covenant. But you're going to say the old covenant Sabbath is better than the new. No, it's not. Because in me, you can find your rest from work. And the old law doesn't have anything on you. Because they should be put to death under the law. Right. Moses said, what you're doing is unlawful. They're to die. But they was in Christ. And his superiority is over it. It just so happens to be the 14th day. He's talking about the father of Abathar, the father of preeminence, the day that King David is about to be crowned king. Because he's about to be the king. He is the high priest. But if you're in him, the law don't have anything on you. Watch this what he says. And then now it's going to get good because I had to lay this groundwork for you. Because what he's making a connection to is like, oh my God. Watch this. He says, how you... Uh, how, um, he says, um, and Jesus said unto them, Have you not read what David did when he had need and was hungry? And he that were with him, how he went into the house of God in the days of Abathar, the high priest, and did eat the showbread. Who's the showbread? He is! It's the bread of face. It's standing in front of him in a grain field. A bread field. <laughs> Jesus, right? The bread of face is with him. He says, which is not lawful to eat, but for the priests. And he gave it also to them which were with him. And he said it to them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is God, Yahweh also of the Sabbath. He's, now he says it, point blank. Point blank. But what's more important, what's being said here. Because there's more to what's being said here than what, that's the face. That's the showbread. That's what's the face we're seeing. Now, when he makes the illusion, the allu he, when he alludes to David, now, this is where it gets crazy. Y'all ready? Let's go, Freddie. Go to 1 Samuel. Um... Go to 1 Samuel chapter 20. Uh, man, Monday, 1 Samuel 20. Um, Monday, uh, uh, after I got finished working, it was late. I got inside. I don't know, well, it wasn't really late, but it was about, took a shower and everything. It was about 6 o'clock. And the Lord led me this way, and, and I just started, I started reading. I was in it for about four hours when he just started unloading, I mean, just showing me. And all I could do was just write, wow, wow. Because the meat, 
of what is being said here when he makes a direct connection to David you know is just mind-blowing so let's see what he's really saying you guys ready now the importance the importance of this is just like I tell you before that you have to read right before you read right before he made a direct connection to David and we're gonna read 21 but let's see the groundwork right before what's going on because you just don't want to walk into something because the build up to what's what he's alluding to is everything but in, in order to understand that you got to read right before it right so watch this all right well we're gonna start with him Lord um, it says uh, um, okay we're gonna start in 20 and I'm gonna read fast okay I'm gonna try to now um, really quick um, Saul wants to kill David now he wants to kill him verse 20 uh, chapter 20 and 1st Samuel chapter 20 watch this so so D David's fleeing he uh, flees away from Saul Saul tried to spear him sound familiar pierced Christ's side remember it's all about Jesus now start connecting the dots Watch this. And David fled from uh, Naoth, which means a habitation, and went in Ramah, and came and said, remember when, when Jesus, uh, when they killed the, the, the babies, when Jesus was being born, the voice of Ramah, right? You remember that? Jesus and Luke, when it, it talks about him dying, say yes if you know. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, and they would, they, and, they, and the wives would, uh, the mothers would not be comforted, right. right? So when David fled from Naoth, which means a habitation, and went into weeping and to Ramah, and he said, "What have I done? What is, uh, what is my sin? And what is my sin before thy father that he seeketh my life?" Jesus had no sin, right? And they put that yet they want to kill him, right? Crazy, amazing. And he said unto him, "God forbid, thou shalt not die. Behold, my father will do." Do nothing either great nor small this is Jonathan talking to David but that will he'll show it unto me and uh, why should my father hide this uh, thing from me it is not so okay let me tell you something really quick so David saying your father wants to kill me and Jonathan whose name means oath who is a representation of the old covenant says to David who is the new covenant my father will not do anything unto you but he reveal it unto me so you the old covenant's going to know exactly what it's going to do to David huh what crazy Watch this. And David swore moreover and said, Thy father certainly knoweth that I have found grace in thine eyes. Jonathan's found grace. And he saith, Let not Jonathan know, David is saying, lest he be grieved, be tr and, but truly, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, there is but uh, a step between me and death. So David is talking about him dying. Man, right? Watch when he's, he's talking about dying. Then said Jonathan unto David, Whatsoever thy soul desireth, I will even do for thee. Right? And David said unto Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow is the new moon. Oh my God! It's the first of the new year! <laughs> it's a new year! Rosh Hashanah, Nisan, Wow! That I shouldn't, watch this. And David said unto Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow is a new moon, and I should not fail to sit with the king at meat. But let me go, that I may hide myself in the field unto the third day at evening. <laughs> Are you with me? Yeah. He's hiding in the field unto the third day. As he says, if thy father uh, at all miss me, um, then say David earnestly asks leave of me that he might run to Bethlehem, his city, where the lambs are taken from, for there is a yearly sacrifice there for all the family. Jesus is making a direct connection to this. Are you with me? Yeah. Wow. 
And he says, if he say thus, it is well, thy servant shall have peace. But if he is very wroth, then sure uh, that evil is determined upon him. Therefore, thou shalt deal kindly with thy servant, for thou hast brought thy servant into a covenant of the Lord with thee. Jonathan made a covenant, made an oath with David right there on the covenant day. Is that crazy? God is amazing. And he, Jesus, is making a direct uh, connection to it. He says, um... Therefore thou shalt deal kindly with thy servant, for thou hast brought thy servant unto a covenant of the Lord with thee. Notwithstanding, if there be in me iniquity, slay me thyself, David said. If you find sin in me, kill me yourself, O covenant, Jonathan. Right? For why shouldest thou bring me to thy father? And Jonathan said, Far be from thee, for I knew certainly that evil was deter it, for I knew certainly that evil were determined by my father to come upon thee, then would I not tell thee wait, let me start over. And Jonathan said, Far be it from thee. For if I knew certainly that evil was determined by my father to come upon thee, then would not I tell thee? Question mark. Then said David to Jonathan, Who shall tell me? Or what if thy father answers thee roughly? And Jonathan said unto David, Come and let us go into the field. <laughs> and they went out, both of them, in the field. And they went into a field. <laughs> Golly. And Jonathan said unto David, O Lord God of Israel, when I have sounded my father about tomorrow any time or the third day, and behold, if there be good toward David, and I then send not it unto thee and show it to thee, the Lord do so and much more to Jonathan. But if it please the father to do the evil, then I will show it to thee, meaning David, he'll tell him, and send thee away that thou mayest go in peace and the Lord uh, be with thee as he hath been with my father. So Jonathan says, I'm going to go back and I'm going to tell my daddy when we at this three-day feast right here in the next three days, my day, if my father asks for you and, um, and I tell him that I'll let you go, and he's fine, then you know he ain't, you know, he's good. But if he gets angry, then I'll know he wants to kill you, right? That's what he says. And, I'm, and he t Jonathan says, I'm making an oath and a covenant underneath the sky of heavens on the covenant day with you right now. Jonathan is making a covenant with David on a covenant day, right? When you see the slither of the new moon, Rosh Hashanah, right? He says, but also, verse 15, but also thou shalt not cut off the kindness, wait, let me go back up, 14, and thou shalt not uh, only while yet I live show me kindness of the Lord that I die not. Watch this, but also thou shalt not cut off thy kindness from my house forever. No, not when the Lord hath cut off the enemies of David, every one from the face of the earth. This Jonathan who represents the old covenant is cutting a new covenant with David that when David becomes king, that he would not cut off his house. Right? And Jonathan's name means oath or covenant. Watch this. So, or Jonathan, he's making a covenant. He says, so Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, oh, that's pretty amazing, David. So John, out of, I think, five or six of them, but it, it, it's there, so plain as day. And he says, and he divided 300 men into three companies, and he put a trumpet in every man's hand with, an em with empty pitchers, and lamps was put inside of the pitcher. Wow, it will be empty. Mm. And when thou hast stayed three days, then thou shalt go down quickly. <laughs> Jeez, I'm quick crickets. <laughs> and come to the place where thou didst hide thyself. Where did David hide himself? <laughs> we got to find out. 
He says, uh, And when thou hast stayed three days, then thou shalt go down quickly and come to the place where thou uh, didst hide thyself when the business was in the hand, was in hand, and shalt remain by the stone of easel. <laughs> now the stone of easel, the stone of easel means a heap of stones or an altar. So David went and hid three days by the stone of easel, a heap of stones, an altar. You with me? Yeah. You with me? Yeah. This is what Jesus is making a connection to. He says, And I will shoot three arrows on the side thereof as though I shot at a mark. Okay. Okay. There, there's an arrow on the right. There's an arrow on the left. And there's an arrow holding the two feet. He's on the altar. Three arrows. Pierced. Wow. <laughs> Crazy. Only God. And did I fail to tell you this is a thousand years before Jesus comes? He says, so, <laughs> he says, and I will shoot three arrows on the side thereof, as though I shot at a mark. And behold, I will send a lad saying, Go find out the arrows where they went. If I expressly say unto the lad, Behold, the arrows are on this side of thee, take them, then come thou, for there is peace to thee, and no hurt, as the Lord liveth. So if I shoot three arrows and I tell the lad to take them and bring them to me, there's peace. Right? But if I say thus unto the young man, Behold, the arrows are behind thee. Right? Go thy way, for the Lord hath sent thee away. The arrows represents death. Represents death. If they're behind you, they're coming after you. Jesus said, where we just read, why do you seek to kill me? <laughs> they kill me crazy. He gives him the he gives him the Sabbath. He's Lord of the Sabbath. Heals the, the man's hand and says, "Why do you seek to kill me?" This is saying he's making connection to it, and he says, "And as touching the matter which thou and I have spoken of, behold, the Lord be between thee and me forever." This is an everlasting covenant. Now we can get into later what it really means about Mephibosheth. But now it's going to be, whoo, wow. You're going to find out, you can find out now why Mephibosheth's feet were feeble. Why? There was a reason he was dropped. And his feet was now under the king's table. The old covenant. Now, or, you know, anyway. I got to stop that. Let me know. So David hid himself. Watch. So David hid himself in the field. And when the new moon was come, the king sat down to eat meat. <laughs> David hid himself in the field for three days. Do we know anybody else that hid himself for three days? Right? He said, and the king sat down upon his seat as at other times, even upon the seat by the wall. <laughs> Man. And Jonathan arose, and Abner sat by Saul's side, and David's place was empty. Right? And uh, so what arose? Jonathan arose, a new covenant. Oh! A new covenant arose. Watch what he says. Nevertheless, Saul spake not anything that day, for he thought something had befallen him, and he is not clean. Surely he is not clean. Remember, you got the only way you can keep the feast if you're clean. This is bam, right? But watch. And it came to pass on the morrow, which was the second day of the month, that David's place was empty, and Saul said unto Jonathan his son, Wherefore cometh not the son of Jesse? To meet, neither yesterday nor today. Two days. <laughs> Two days he's hidden away. Revealed on a third, right? 
And Jonathan answered Saul, David earnestly asked leave to go to Bethlehem. And he said, let me go, I pray thee, for our family hath a sacrifice in the city. <laughs> wow. And my brother, he hath commanded me to be there. David's brother, the law, commanded David to be there. He's got to be there. Right? That's why Christ had to be at the cross. The law commanded it. And now, if I have found favor in thine eyes, let me uh, get away, I pray thee, and see my brethren. Therefore he cometh not unto the king's table. So that's David. He told Jonathan, tell your father this, right? It says, watch this. Oh, my Lord. Watch this. Whoo! Son, this opened some stuff up. Then Saul's anger. Now, let me just tell you this. Do you know that all three kings were from Bethlehem? <laughs> all three kings. Saul, Bethlehemite, David, right? And Solomon. So Jesus. Wow. Watch this. And Bethlehem means house of bread or heaven's oven. Face bread. Show bread. Watch this. Then Saul's anger was kindled against Jonathan and said unto him, Thou son of a perverse and rebellious woman. <laughs> That's Israel. <laughs> That's Israel. <laughs> wow. You understand? It's the old covenant, the law. The children of Israel was rebellious. Yeah. Right? Do not I know that thou hast chosen the son of Jesse, Yahweh is God, or Yahweh exists, is what his name. He says, do not I know that thou hast chosen the son of uh, Yahweh to thine own confusion? <laughs> And unto the confusion of thy mother's nakedness. Why? Nakedness. Because the law can't cover you. The fig leaves can't cover you. You son of a perverse woman. You son whose mother of nakedness. Heaven I know that you have chosen the David, the well-beloved, over the old covenant. Now he doesn't know what he's saying, but that's what it means. And this is what Jesus is referring to. Watch what he says. For as long as the son of Jesse liveth, man, check this out. For as long as the son of Jesse lives, Watch this. Liveth upon the ground, thou shalt not be established. You can't have a new covenant without the death of the bridegroom. <laughs> Tim? You can't establish a new covenant without the death of an old. You can't get married again without the death of an old covenant of your husband dying. You're not set free from the law until a death has happened. Till the old man is dead. That's why Jesus was the law. Clothed in the flesh, he had to die to become the new bridegroom. Oh. Man! This is what Jesus is referring to. And it's so crazy that when he's making this connection, this right here with David is falling under Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. They're alluding to three days. Passover. Because <laughs> Jesus on Passover, on the second Sabbath, is making the reconnection to Yom Kippur, the new moon, the day of atonement. And they're one and the same. Ooh, bam. <laughs> Wait. We ain't got to the good stuff yet. 
Watch this. Mm, I'm telling you. So he says, uh, okay. He says, uh, and it came to pass in the morning. Let's say, all right. So Jonathan arose from the table. Wait, oh, and wait, hold on. I got over 32. I'm sorry. He says, um, Jonathan answered. No. Yeah, and Jonathan answered Saul, his father, and said unto him, Wherefore shall he be, why shall he be slain? What has he done? He's innocent. And Saul cast a javelin at him to smite him. Whereby, Jan John whereby Jonathan knew that it was determined of his father to, to, to spear David, to kill David. Right? So Jonathan arose from the table in fierce anger and did eat no meat. The fasting... Right? Jesus making mention of fasting. Because now David's leaving. Jonathan's heart was torn. But you know, Jonathan didn't go with David. He couldn't leave his father. He had to honor him. Because it was of the old covenant. And he died with Saul on Mount Gilboa. Where his father made himself a sacrifice. But his heart was with David. And he knew he was going to die. Because of his father. My wife says... You know who she wants to meet in heaven? Jonathan. She's always said it. Because they have a heart like that. Jonathan fell in love with David when he killed Goliath. This is 17 years later. I'm sorry, 13 years later. And it came to pass in the morning that Jonathan went out into the field at that time appointed with David. Appointed time. That's the word moed, feast. Appointed times. Feast and festivals, moed. And a little lad with him. And he said unto his lad, run, find out now where the arrows which I shot, I shoot. And as the lad ran, he shot an arrow behind him. And when the lad was come to the place of the arrow which Jonathan had shot. Jonathan cried after the lad. He said, Is not the arrow behind you? And Jonathan cried aloud to the lad, Make speed, haste, stay not. He's telling David, The enemy, the law is behind you. It wants to kill you. Make haste, make speed. Get out of here. And Jonathan's lad gathered up the arrows and came to his master. Can somebody, can you, uh, somebody So, hey, did you ever think uh, 
<laughs> Test. Did you ever think this is what Jesus was talking about? <laughs> I mean, wow. And he's making this connection. Watch. Man. Oh, wow. So what he says, <clears throat> he, um, and when the lad was come to the place of the arrows which Jonathan had shot in verse 37, this is uh, 2037, um, he cried after the, la the lad and said, Is not the arrow behind thee? And Jonathan cried after the lad, Make speed haste, stay not. And Jonathan's uh, lad gathered up the arrows and he came to his master. But the lad knew not anything. Only Jonathan and David knew the matter. Only Jonathan and David knew the matter. And Jonathan gave his weapons unto his, unto his lad and said unto him, Go carry them to the city. Um, and as soon as the lad was gone, David arose out of the place toward the south and fell on his face to the ground and bowed himself three times. And they kissed one another and wept one another until David exceeded, controlled himself. And Jonathan said to David, so here it is on the third day, David is making his, is being revealed. So he was dead three days. A place where is an altar of stones. Remember what we read? The arrows, right? And on the third day, you know, he makes his appearance. He stands up, you know. And, and Jonathan said to David, Go in peace for as much as we have sworn both of us in the name of the Lord, Yahweh, saying, The Lord be between me and thee, and between my seed and thy seed forever. They all, they're Benjamites. <laughs> they're already connected. This is greater than, this is something greater than their friendship. That's why it says a friend stick close, closer than a brother. This is about a covenant that's being cut. This is about a marriage that's being made. The covenant is a marriage. Right? That's what it's about. You know, this is what Jesus is alluding to before it's all happening. That's why he's talking about the bride in the chamber, the bridegroom. What is on Jesus' mind? before he speaks is this. He's thinking about Jonathan and David in the covenant. That's why he says it. Wow. How would you like to know now what's on the mind of Christ? Wow. What's on his mind? The word. And what he's fulfilling and knowing what he's doing and where he's going and what's going to happen. He's saying. <clears throat> and Jonathan said to David, go in peace for as much as we have sworn both of us in the name of Yahweh, saying between the Lord and between thee and between my seed and thy seed forever. And he arose and departed and Jonathan went into the city. So here it is. It's the third day, right? And we know the covenant was. They took him in. Come in on the 10th, right? Died on the 14th, right? Three days later, then bam, that new covenant's established. He arose from the dead. The death didn't have anything on him, couldn't hold him in the ground. Proof, bam, gets up out the ground three days later. The covenant right here. So here is the old covenant you know, making a direct connection to the new covenant. You understand? In, in the feast parts of it. Here, now. Whew. You ready? Now. That was awesome. Was awesome. You ready? Here it comes. Now, if you know the story of Jesus, that when he died, he came as a prophet. And then when he died and rose again, where did he go, people? Where did he go? He went to heaven. Right? Because he became the high priest after the order of Melchizedek. So he went to the temple. And, right? So watch this. So David now, you know, on the third day reveals himself. And he just arose from the dead. A place of an altar, which is the picture of Christ. 
Where does David go next? Let's see. Then David came to Nob. Nob means height or exalted. David was exalted, right? Then David came to Nob to Ahimelech, the priest. Now, Ahimelech, his name means my brother is king, right? That's who he is. So David, as soon as he embraces Jonathan on the third day, he leaves there and goes to the house of God, the temple. When Jesus died and rose again, he went straight to the house of God in heaven and became the high priest. That's who this is right here. Watch this. Then came David to Nob, meaning a, a high exalted place, to Ahimelech, my brother is king, right? And the priest, and Ahimelech was afraid. Now watch, Jesus and Luke, I mean, and Mark said he went to Abiathar, right? The high priest. Remember in Luke? Let me go back real quick. Was it in Luke or Mark? Um, let me see, was it in uh, Luke? Luke 6, um, he says, wow, this is crazy, amazing stuff, Luke. He says, um, 20, what is it, 26? Luke, Mark, Mark 2, 26? Okay, who is that talking? Oh, Tess, good, awesome. I moved Mark 2, 26. So, Jesus is making... A direct connection and he says something he says um, in 226 and 25 it says and he said unto them have you never read what David did here's what David did we're reading it now but we had to read right before David to line up to understand what Jesus is saying how David went uh, have you never read what David did when he had need and he was hungry and they uh, and them that were with him and he went into the house of God in the days of Abiathar, the high priest. <laughs> so Jesus, David, after being, you know, uh, resurrected on the third day, goes to the temple of the high priest with, watch this, he goes to the temple of, who's the high priest, Abiathar, and he comes to the priest, Ahimelech, whose name means king. And Jesus is the king priest after the order of Melchizedek when he arose from the dead. So Jesus ascended to heaven, went and became the king priest after the order of Melchizedek. David ascends on the third day, goes to a high exalted place, to the temple, which is on top of a mount, comes to Abimelech, uh, uh, Abimelech Abiathar, which is the high priest. And first one he runs to is Ahimelech, which is, his name means king. Right? It's the prophet, priest, and king again. Prophet, priest, and king. So back. So, so then David, uh, then came David to a high exalted place to where, uh, to the king priest, Ahimelech, and he was afraid uh, of the meet, of meeting David and said unto him, why, why, man, why art thou alone and no man with thee? <laughs> Jesus said, I go and where I go, you cannot come. Right? Watch what he says. And David said it, but watch this now. Hold on a second. There was others with David, remember? Remember what Jesus said? Do you not know what David did and the others that were with him that came and ate the bread in the house? When Jesus arose from the dead, he arose with the first fruits, right? The grain offering and took them to heaven. Are you with me? Yeah. You with me, Carl? Yes. <laughs> so watch this. Then David said unto Ahimelech, the priest, the king hath commanded me a business, and hath said unto me, Let no man know that let no man know anything of this business whereabout I send thee, and what I have commanded thee. <laughs> wow. Nobody knows the business of what Jesus is doing. Right? Why? Because the Father sent them to do it, and nobody knew it. What was going on? And and he appointed uh it says and I have appointed my servants to such... Wait up, let me see. And David said unto Ahimelech, the king, uh, the, the priest, the king priest, 
Uh, the king hath commanded me a business, and hath said unto me, Let no man know anything of this business whereabout I send thee, and what I have commanded thee. And I have appointed my servants to such and such a place. Now therefore, what is under thine hand? Watch this right here. Oh, you guys ready? David said, David says to the priest, the high priest, uh, Now therefore, what is under thy hand? Give me five loaves of bread in my hand, or what uh, there is present. Watch this. Five loaves of bread. That's grace. Five is the number of grace. I'm going to connect those five loaves for you. Watch this. And the priest answered David and said, There is no common bread under my hand. Watch this. But there is holy bread. If the young men have kept themselves at least from women, and David answered the priest and said unto him, Of a truth, there's, so there's men there, <coughs> right? So the priest said at first, you're alone. And he was afraid. But no. No, but now he says, but David, who are the, these men? If they've kept themselves. Well, Jesus, when he arose from the dead, he went straight to the temple. Right? Because he... What did he say? Right? When he died on the cross, he was thirsty. And I will not eat with you again till I eat anew in my kingdom. Right? So he says, And David answered the priest and said unto him, Of a truth, women have been kept from us about these three days since I came out. <laughs> Come out of what? The ground! He was hiding in the altar, in the field. He come out of the ground. He was in the altar. Wow. Three days. He had to be taking cover somewhere. And the vessels of the young man are holy. And the bread is in a manner common. Yea, though it were sanctified this day. Let me go back and read this now. And David answered the priest and said unto him, Of a truth, women have been kept from us. Hold on a second. I mean, I think Jesus talks about when he took the first fruits, the 144,000, into heaven. Right? They were virgins, not seeing a woman. Kind of making a little connection here, right? These, and it literally says, and it says, eat, but it's the first fruits. But anyway, I don't want to get off track on it. And David answered the priest and said unto him, Of a truth, women have uh, been kept from us about uh, these three days since I came out. And the vessels of the young men are holy. They're holy now. Since he's been resurrected, right? The vessels are holy. What vessels? Them. Them. Not the cups in their hands. This ain't talking about cups. It's talking about them being abstained from women on the third day. They're now holy. Because what Jesus did when he arose from the dead on the third day made us holy. Amen. And the bread is in a manner common. Yea, though it were sanctified this day in the vessel. What does that mean? Well, it was now only good for the priest to eat because of what I did and rose again on the third day. The bread is for the common folk. Now, you and me can eat. Watch what he says. So the priest gave him the hollowed bread. Watch this. For there was no bread there but the shoe bread that was taken from before the Lord to put hot bread in the day when it was taken away. What? What did just... Ah! David entered the temple on the seventh day rest. When the priest was changing out the bread, the bread was still hot. Yeah. 
Did you not know what David did and went in and ate the bread? That in it, he's making a direct connection. That was the Sabbath day. He did it. When they, when they put the bread on the table, they took it off. Right? It was as it was just come out of the, the oven. That's why Bethlehem's name means the house of bread. Heaven's oven. Wow. He says, Now, a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day, detained before the Lord. And his name was Doag. Watch this. An Edomite, the chief, the chiefest of the herdmen that belonged to Saul. He was a herdsman of Saul, of Bethlehem, of lambs. And David said unto Ahimelech, watch this. Is there not here under thine hand spear or sword? For I have neither brought my sword nor my weapons with me. Because the king's business required haste. People, listen to me. David is now looking for a sword. Because grace is over. You understand? That means when Jesus ascended, when he ascended into heaven as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, he went looking for a sword. Watch this. And the priest answered and said, The sword of Goliath, the Philistine, is here. Whom thou slewest in the valley of Elah. Behold, it is here wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. Oh, in the temple. If thou wilt take that, take it, for there is no other save that one here. There's not another sword in the temple but that sword. And David said, there is none like that. Give it me. <laughs> this sword that's in the house of God is the sword of Goliath. Here it is. I'll bring you back to David killing Goliath and Golgatha. David, the beloved, goes down into the valley and kills Goliath. And remember, this now picture of by David asking for a sword and the priest making the connection to David, the only thing that's here is the sword of Goliath. That's, behind, that's wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod, which is what the priest wore. The priest wore the ephod. The sword is behind the ephod. How did David get the sword? Back to the sword, five stones. Five stones? Five loaves of bread. <laughs> what? Crazy. So now the high priest is saying, hey, remember when you killed Goliath with five smooth stones? He stone turned the stones into bread. Five, the number of God's grace. And David took the sword of Goliath and cut off his own head. Remember Goliath's problem? Is there any man? The mouth, the word, they feared him. 
Let him come out and fight me to see who's the God. Either the God of the Philistines or the God of, the, of, of Israel. Right? Big mouth, big sword. The sword is, comes out of the mouth of Christ. The sword of the Spirit. This sword that belongs to Goliath is a representation, right, of the Word of God. There's no sword that, that David used this sword to cut off the enemy's head. The stone crushed his head. That sword of a Nephilim, which was Goliath of Gath, is also a direct connection to when David cut off the head and carried it to Jerusalem. Because where you get the word Golgotha, Golgotha, where Jesus died, the place of a skull. <coughs> so here it is, they're making another direct connection to David. Jesus is making a connection in the, this is the chapter he quoted. He's letting them know. Don't you know what David did? Is what I'm about to do. I'm about to die. And I'm going to rise again on the third day. And I'm going to send up into the heaven because one greater than the temple is here and one greater than the high priest is here. I am the king priest after the order of Melchizedek and I'm going to exal ex be exalted into the heavens. And he's going to go get his sword and he's going to become the king of kings and the lord of lords. This is what? That's why he says Abiathar. That's why he was saying, don't you know who is the high priest, Abiathar, whose name means preeminence? That I'm over everything. And you don't have to worry about anything. As long as you're in me. What he said? The men are holy. The vessels are sanctified. They have been set apart. And now they are priests and they can profane the Sabbath. <laughs> but only in me. Because I am the Sabbath. Amen. And what they're doing is not profaning it. Because I'm God of the Sabbath. I'm over the Sabbath. And as long as they're in me, they're holy. Watch this. And I'm ending. He says, And David arose and fled that day for the fear of Saul and went to Achish, which is Abimelech, the king of Gath. So David left right there and went to a wine press. Gath means wine press. Another direct connection of the Garden of Gethsemane where Christ was crushed. Now, I'm going to read one little part. I'm going to skip over to chapter 22 to show you what happened. In chapter 22, verse 18, we we'll go back to Doag. Remember Doag was there? Saul. Doag is the one that saw David there and went back, and I ain't going to read it to you, and told Saul. And Saul said, hey, we gone. Right? Look what he does. So David flees to Adullam, which is a place of refuge. Then it says in verse 6, Saul slays the priest of God. Is that funny? Is that crazy? Why would the next thing be? I'm asking you, tell me. Why would the next thing you would see the priest of God slain? What's that? Because he ended the priesthood. Because Jesus, when he died, the Levitical priesthood now became dead. 
become dead. It had to die. So that the new covenant could be established. That's why in the story, the next thing that happens is the Le you see the Levite priest dying. The priesthood. Watch what he says. And the king said to Doag, after he tells him, who here will slay him? And Doag, the chief, watch this, of Saul's sheep. He's the shepherd. Doag is the shepherd of Saul's sheep. Who's going to kill these lambs, these sheep? Doag said, I'll do it. Nobody else wanted to do it. Right? So Doag, he turned thou and, and fell upon the priest. And Doag, the Edomite. Why is he an Edomite? Edom. Esau. Red. Adam. Where sin entered. Right? He turned and fell upon the priest and slew that day four score and five, 85 persons that did wear the linen ephod. That was all that was there. Killed 85. You know, that's what happened when they came and besieged the city in 586 B.C. when they destroyed the temple and in 70 A.D. they killed all the priests and the temple. You see? It's over. That priesthood was over. But watch what happens. And Nob, which means height or altar, that place of an altar. Uh, and Nob, the city of the priest, smote he with the edge of the sword, both men, women, children, suckling, oxen, asses, sheep, with the edge of the sword. One of the sons of Ahimelech, son of a high tub, named Abiathar. Now Abiathar is the one that Jesus mentioned. Don't you know what Abiathar did? Watch. He escaped and fled after David. And Abiathar showed David what Saul, uh, how Saul had slain the Lord's priest. And David said unto Abiathar, I knew it that day when Doag the Edomite was there, that he would surely tell Saul, I have occasioned the death. He knew it. David knew the priesthood was going to die. Like Jesus. Of all the persons, um, let's see. I, uh, I knew the death of all the persons of thy father's house. He's talking to Abiathar. He says, Abide thou with me, and fear not. For he that seeketh my life, seeketh thy life. But with me thou shalt be in safeguard. Wow. So Abiathar, right? Just like Jonathan made a covenant with David. Abiathar made a covenant with David. David made a covenant with Abiathar. David made a covenant with Jonathan. Jonathan made a covenant with David. Therefore, the Jews and the Gentiles being engrafted in through what Christ has done. Let's pray. Father, your word, every, no matter how we go, what we do, Father, it's always about your son, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the word. I thank you for the face bread, Lord. I thank you for the communion that we had today, Father, and your word with your spirit, with you and your son. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Be blessed, guys.